Welcome. This is Management 3234, Fundamentals of Entrepreneurship. Uh, today is session six. If we, were, if we were meeting in class, it would be 29 June. It would be the first day of our second week. I only have one thing to share with you administratively. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is that tomorrow on 30 June 2020, both of your article reviews are due. One for the Journal of Management Education article and one for the Journal of Engineering and Technology Management article. Uh, guidelines have been up, articles have been up. Uh, I am certainly hopeful that you meet the deadline. So uh, that's the only admin thing I have to share with you. I guess there's one other thing I want to share with you because I, I uh, have to diligently search for ideas to come up with that are off topic that I can use for attendance verification. So, I'm reasonably sure that you can see that I'm sitting here wearing a nine-line shirt. You know it's nine-line because it says so on the right shoulder, just beneath the American flag. Um, my daughter was uh, uh, participating in a, in a peaceful protest in Savannah a few days ago, and for whatever reason, she was inspired to go by the nine-line facility. I think it's on Highway 204 south of town. I've been there one time. So she saw this t-shirt and thought that has to go home with me because my dad loves coffee and he loves rifles. So I'm wearing my early Father's Day present. My little girl got it for me for Father's Day and I'm deeply appreciative of that. So <clears throat> today we're back in the Journal of uh, Management Education article. We're going to focus on appendix, appendix C, Charlie, and that is the appendix that talks about creating a consideration set. So y'all give me a moment and I'll, I'll get it up um, on the screen. Now, <clears throat> let me start with um, the material that's in the body of the text. You will recall, because we've talked about this several times, this article was written for entrepreneurship educators, for faculty teaching these concepts to, uh, to students who are studying entrepreneurship. Uh, so the body of the paper is for the educators, and the appendices are for the students. But it is well that we toggle back and forth. I think there's stuff that you can, that you can learn from and benefit from. So, the reason I want to go here is, is although the appendix talks about this, I think the body of the article brings it to life in a better way. When I talk to you about consideration sets, I'm going to get there in a moment, but I'm going to take a building blocks approach. When I say that, I'm going to start at the most fundamental level and then, and then build on that. So I'm going to start with signals, <clears throat> excuse me, then we'll talk about information channels, and then we'll talk about consideration sets. So let me scroll down so that you can see this um, information about a signal. All right, the first full paragraph that you see says we're going to start with the classic definition of a signal. Signal is an information carrying packet that has the, all, the potential to alter an actor's perception about a future state. Now, um, what we point out here is that not all signals are useful, and, and we are arguing, my co-author and I are arguing, the signals in this context of systematic search, in this context of entrepreneurship, the signals can discreetly be put into three categories. Those three categories are, excuse me, <clears throat> almost find it, valueless, absolutely no value, provocative, or compelling. And if you take a moment to read the, this section of the paper, uh, you'll recall that if something is valueless, it's a signal that's simply noise. It's noise in the channel. It has no value to you, you may discard it. If a signal is provocative, what we mean explicitly is it will provoke you to think about something. You may think, my goodness, 
There may be the potential there for a business idea, but I don't know enough about it. So it provokes you to do more research, to learn more. And in some cases, as we point out here, some signals are compelling. And by that, we mean they are so information rich that you are willing to act on it. I, I can't know what form that may take. What if? What if you needed a new pair of dress shoes because you're going to be interviewing soon? And you, you saw something, whether it was in a digital format or a print format, it's irrelevant. You saw that Belks has a 50% off sale on all of its shoes. You have a need, you see this signal, this packet of information that carries information that might make you act. So, so again, I don't dispute that you could look at signals in a more fine-grained approach than we're suggesting, but we're talking about how aspiring entrepreneurs systematically search for commercializable ideas. And our argument is that signals come in three flavors. Valueless, absolutely no value at all, provocative or compelling. And that's pretty intuitive, it really is. So now, I want to move to the second piece of this puzzle. We talk about consideration sets, and you can see that I'm pointing at two italicized words that say information channels. The definition of an information channel is in that sentence. They are defined as, information channels are defined as sources of frequent, reliable, low-cost signals. An information channel is nothing other than a source of frequent, reliable, low-cost signals. My wife and I, for about two years, actively considered buying an RV. Not because I'm close to retirement, but because just we thought we saw value in that. We later, later decided not to. But because I knew little about RVs, I started subscribing to two magazines, RV Life and Trailer Life. And, and I, I did two year subscriptions to both of them and every single, every single issue, I would find information that makes the cut. I would find information that was reliable, frequent, and low cost. That would describe almost any trade journal, wouldn't it? Uh, here's another example, I think, of an information channel. Let's pretend for a moment that I'm a commercial real estate developer here in Statesboro, and I decide to join the Chamber of Commerce. Well, there are all kinds of reasons that I would do that. Being connected to the community is one. Uh, inevitably, there'll be benefits that accrue to my business, like uh, low-cost insurance or whatever the case may be. And the Chamber is an advocate of all businesses. So lots of value to joining a Chamber of Commerce. So here's my point. I join a Chamber of Commerce, and on a monthly meeting, we have our breakfast, a luncheon, a business after hours, some event like that. Well, what's going to happen? At every one of these monthly meetings, I'm going to interact with other people in the community. They may be in real estate or not. But if I'm part of the business community here, I learn about things that are emerging. Properties coming for sale, businesses that are coming to town, businesses that may be closing. But the point is that my membership in a Chamber of Commerce would be an information channel because it would be a source of frequent, reliable, low-cost signals. So a signal is a packet of information. An information channel is nothing other than a source of signals that are regular, reliable, and low-cost. Now, let me scroll down so we get to consideration sets. <coughs> paragraph says consideration sets represent the final building block. Consideration sets are additive, nothing other than a group of information channels that, that are in the same domain. Uh, let me stick with that commercial real estate developer thing. I told you that one information channel might be me joining the local chamber of commerce. Here's a second one. Wouldn't I want to, to become a member of a multiple listing service? The thing that realtors put all properties in so I know what properties are on the market and how they're zoned and what the prices are and I can go examine them if I think they're valuable. So me joining any realtor multiple listing service would be an information channel. Uh, I could regularly take two or three bankers to lunch or meet for coffee in the course of a month. And those bankers could be an information channel because if they're in commercial lending, I might say, what's shaking? What's going on at the Dairy Queen? You see my point. Are there any new developments that you're aware of? Um, 
anybody selling property, buying property, new businesses coming to town. An information channel is a source of frequent, reliable, low-cost signals. A consideration set is additive. It's just several information channels literally put together, but they all focus on the same domain. So that's all a consideration set is. Um, if, if I have a lot of experience with motorcycles, I mean, something like on the long side of 55 years. Uh, so there are a lot of, I mean, I might join a trade association. I might subscribe to magazines. I might go take uh, uh, owners to, to lunch or, or meet with techs and say, what's going on technologically, any, any radical shifts. It wasn't that many years ago that motorcycles went from chain drive to shaft drive. Not everybody has shaft drive, but that was a big change technologically. And, and uh, Harley, for decades, all of Harley's engines were carbureted. Well, now they're fuel injected. That's a technological change, and that has implications, doesn't it? For the aftermarket, for what techs do, for the price of the motorcycle, for a lot of things. So, when I say to you a building blocks approach, we start up with a signal, a packet of information. Those signals are found in information channels. A consideration set is nothing other than three or four or more information channels that you search that are combined because they represent the sources of information in a particular domain. Commercial real estate, the restaurant industry, the motorcycle industry, whatever it is that you're interested in. So that's the reality. All we do here as we create the, the task that you have, which is part of your venture journal, is to thoughtfully create one or more consideration sets because I certainly hope that you have one or more domains that you would search in. So that is today, and I'm gonna go back down to the appendix in just a second, but when I say that is today, today is meant to jumpstart you on this process of creating consideration sets for every knowledge domain that you identify. That's all you do, is you create consideration sets. You, you know the domains, it, it could be cooking, it could be soccer, it could be playing the piano, it could be anything. It could be teaching archery, you know the domain where you have some competence, some prior knowledge. So for each of those domains, you need to develop a consideration set. And a consideration set is nothing other than several, three or four or more, information channels. Sources of regular, reliable, low-cost signals. So the focus in this, in this part of today, in Appendix C, and we're going to go there in just a second, is, uh, is for you to develop consideration sets. So let me go down to Appendix C, because that will be the student version of what we're asking you to do. Nobody's getting vertigo, right? All right, Appendix C. You can see that in a short form, we start to talk about this information thing. We talk about signals and information channels and consideration sets. And, and here, all you do in, in this particular task is to build consideration sets. So let me pull this down so I can, we together can see what the rest of this thing says. Here's your to-do list. When it says you should try to identify six categories, that would be driven by the number of, of knowledge domains where you've identified some, some prior knowledge, some expertise. It could be in dance, which would be mine. Okay, um, you would have identified knowledge domains, agreed? Cooking, sports, uh, something work related, something IT related, something firearms related, I don't know. But you would have identified knowledge domains. And if you identified four, you're gonna build four consideration sets. However, we just say sort of uh, somewhat artificially um, that you might identify six or whatever that says. Now, so use your list of achievements as indicators and use your accomplishment matrix. Again, once again, to sort of converge on what domains, in what domains rather, do I have competence? In what domains do I possess meaningful knowledge? And it would be in those knowledge domains where you create consideration sets. So for each of those domains, you identify several information channels that you could search. And then this talks about determining an order. We're actually gonna talk in another, in another class session, in another video, about developing search strategies. So forgive me, again, this article was written and it sort of contemplated 
uh, educators who teach master students, MBA students, in this kind of a domain, and they were meeting once a week. So there are subtle differences, but fundamentally, structurally, you're going to be doing the same thing, and we have a lot of evidence that suggests that it works. So here, for each knowledge domain that you identify, there could be three, four, five, six. Build a consideration set. Consideration set would be three or four information channels that you could regularly search for information about that particular domain. Let me scroll down to see if there's anything else. Actually, if you look at this very, very simple matrix that I've presented, there are three columns, A, B, and C, and three rows. Um, in, 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 we're just, this is meant to jumpstart you. A, column A would be the knowledge domains. Column B would be the information channels for each one of them. Column C would be this additive, this collection of information channels about a domain. So again, th this is incomplete, but all we want you to understand is this is a pretty straightforward approach. And, and indeed, that's why it's called the systematic search theory. So I believe, I believe that, that that represents what I wanted to share with you about, about Appendix C and about the related uh, discussion in, in the text. Um, again, if we were in a face-to-face -face format, there would be, I would hope, a great deal of interaction and questions, but we don't have that luxury, darn it. But we will soon. So, I'm now done in terms of presenting material for session six. I, uh, I will close with asking the attendance verification question. What two things are represented on the front panel of my early Father's Day gift? All right, love you. Talk with you soon.